To headphones neil reviews i'm your host as always headphones neil bringing you this week's episode of the podcast with all my usual reviews except for one just because i didn't have a chance to watch the episode but that's because i started a new gameplay as well so with that being said let's jump right into it so this week's cover image is a phoenix samurai in space so um as we go through the episode you'll see um You'll hear the explanation and connect the dots for why that is, but if you've listened to the past couple of episodes, you'll kind of get an idea of where that's coming from. So to start it off, I had a chance to watch the last episode of The Walking Dead, The Ones Who Live, Season 1, Episode 4, uh, Become, which now that I think about it, I think I didn't update my notes. So, uh, because I think it was, or sorry, Season uh, one episode five become uh, because it's the penultimate episode there's one more episode left episode six the last time um, but regardless we have a good um, episode with Michonne and Rick they're going um, now um, they're trying to get back to I guess Alexandria or whatever they come across this trio of people being attacked by zombies who pulls a gun on them and realize then <laughs> Rick and Michonne basically tell them that something along the lines it's not going to go the way they think and it really doesn't and then they meet up with them later because uh jadis catches up to rick and michonne and uh, wants to try to take them back but so this episode actually had two good scenes in it so that first scene in the woods with the trio was the funny part of the episode but was very well done uh, we have rick and michonne back to their confident self so overall good there but then also a good conversation at the end of the episode with rick michonne and Anne or jadis whatever you want to call her um she was trying to uh, play both sides because the people at alexandria aren't wrong gabriel isn't father gabriel isn't wrong and the crm isn't wrong so she wants every everyone to su succeed but ultimately what the crm is doing is not wrong so she tells rick and michonne where her dossier is back at one of the crm cities and that rick needs to get that echelon um briefing so he knows exactly what they're about and what to do with it um michonne still doesn't care she wants to bring them down but um i'm kind of with jadis on this in that i'm kind of i really do want to know what the echelon briefing is and see if um once rick and michonne have that information is it enough to bring down the crm or is it something where um they want to leave it alone and it's just bad management that where it was kind of like that other family with the i forget which show it was on which walking dead um show it was on where we have the family i think it was fear of the walking dead where you have the military father who was trying to build a society based around a certain principles and then he ended up dying and the kids are taking over and doing things in a, a weird perverted way so i'm wondering if the crm is a bigger representation of that um so with that being said i actually the show i did not get to watch this week was shogun uh which i'll explain why later when i get to the gameplay portion of the show um but over but uh, once i get to watch this in next week's episode i'll probably bulk up on two episode the two episode review of the show but i'm still hearing good things about it so um we'll leave that alone for now um, I had a chance to also watch Star Wars The Bad Batch uh, Season 1, Episode 9, The Harbinger. So um, if you're not, if you haven't seen it and you don't want the spoilers for this one, then definitely skip ahead a little bit. But we finally get the episode with, um, what's her name in it? Now I'm drawing a blank. Um, Asajj Ventress in it, where... Um, She's um, she was Fennec's contact, which I wasn't expecting that at all, and I totally forgot that Ventress was in the trailer. So, um, with that being said, it was an interesting episode because she kind of gets knows what, what the M Hound is for. It's related to people who have force abilities, but maybe she didn't know that it was related to Metaclorians, or maybe it was just a um, production thing where they're dropping that whole midichlorian thing and they're just calling it m count instead to make it sound more scientific 
Um, but it was interesting to see Ventress ha go through the test to see if um, Omega possesses any force traits or anything like that to the point where I was thinking that maybe Omega was the mom to Ray, and she Omega is actually a living clone to Palpatine or like an offspring or something but then I remember that it was Ray's father who was the offspring to Palpatine so I'm beginning to wonder if Omega is actually the template that Palpatine used to create the clone of his son that held the M count and used that to have a natural born offspring in the form of Ray. so um, I'm kind of guessing that's where they're going with it but I thought that was all a very good episode and the ultimate lesson that Ventress tells the Bad Batch that they're all on the same side, they all have to fend for themselves in order to survive, and she has many lives to live. So, um, overall a good episode, I liked all of that, I like that they're coming to blows with each other, that they're all, and that Ventress is showing a lot of restraint, she could have done, she could have killed them all if she wanted to, but she hadn't because that's not the war that they're fighting anymore. Um, so with that being said, I also had a chance to watch X-Men 97, so episode 3, Fire Made Flesh. So with this episode, we actually get uh, more information that um, Jean Grey had been cloned by Mr. Sinister and that Scott Summers and Jean, or Scott Summers had the baby with Jean's clone. So overall, a very interesting episode dealing with that. Scott, you know, is begins to doubt himself again because he didn't because now he doesn't know who he, who he was living his life with was it the real gene or the fake gene and all of that so and then we get you know the whole thing with the missing memories of gene and all that so kind of a good go down a rabbit hole of kind of like a matrix style episode of who is the real gene and who isn't so definitely worth watching um they kind of semi defeat sinister but not really so We'll see if it plays into anything, but um, definitely a good episode to watch after the on the last couple of them. Definitely takes you back to some of the um, episodes that were released back in the day in, as part of the original series. So now before I get into the new gameplay of the week, I did want to talk about the gameplay that I finished. So I finished my latest gameplay of Knights of the Old Republic where I built up Tare Vizsla as kind of like the Mandalorian um character of the um game where he, you have a mandalorian who's a force user so he start off with a lot of gun gun or guns and that kind of weapon and move into lightsaber combat at a jedi so the thing i will say right off the bat is that um the brotherhood of shadow mod for android kept crashing for me at the end of the initial level on the orion couldn't get it to work no matter what i tried so i don't know if it's an android thing or the mod thing or maybe just a versioning issue or something like that that is too you got a recent update that's causing it to break because the youtube video that i saw online seemed like they got it working but then i didn't see i think i might have saw a couple of gameplay videos but then it's been a few years so it might have been before some of the later updates that were pushed for the android version of the game so um i played the rest of the game without it and overall it was a good time so in case you haven't seen the short that I put up on YouTube, what I'm recommending now for the game is the following mods um, to make a more complete gameplay experience and to have an even more powerful character to get around the uh, level cap that you have on the character. So the obvious mod to use when you play the game is Jedi from the start. It makes this um, story a little bit more sensical just because when you have the Force Visions of Bastila and you're not a Force user, then you kind of wonder, well, I mean, you can kind of figure out that your, your probably, character is probably going to get Force powers, because if you're playing a Jedi, then you're going to get it. But then if you don't, you're not anticipating it and then you get it, it's kind of like uh, Sabine in the Ahsoka series where it's like, well, she never had Force powers before, so how did you get it? So having Jedi from the start makes the story a little bit more sensical because at least you can say, well, I have these basic force powers and that's how you, you were able to get to Bastila, rescue her, have the visions with her and all that stuff is that you've shown some force sensitivity. So it makes the, the overarching story of having force powers that much better. And then it also adds to the context of, well, the Jedi Council couldn't quite remove all of Revan's memories. So that's why they came back and he was as powerful as he was before. 
Um, and then the next two mods are the obvious ones just because if you're playing on Android, the Easy Swoop Racing mod is one of those things where the game is not really translated well for mobile, so it's really hard to finish those quests if you want to finish them, especially on... I think Manon is probably the slightly easier one, but regardless, with Manon and Tatooine, it's kind of hard to be, uh, beat the game because the controls are really, really sluggish. So by using the Easy Swoop Racing mods, it puts all the pads in one line, so you just have to go in a straight line and you can progress with those mods. It is kind of a cheat because you're doing that, but that's only because the mobile version of the game is not a very easy way to play that game. It's kind of like the um, space battles for the game. It's really sluggish, but those space battles actually don't matter. And it's actually a lot easier to finish those battles than it is to finish the swoop racing. So um, by using the easy swoop racing mod, um, it makes it easier to get those um, experience points and finish the quest related to them. And then for the Easy Pasak mod, um, I, I mainly recommend this because it's one of those things where the game is really unbalanced unba within the game itself. It's really highly in favor of the um, AI for the game. So that's why I recommend the Easy Pasak mod so that you can also, so not only does it give you the ability to earn some easy credits if you need it, but um, when you go to Yavin Station, it makes it easier to get through beating the Rodian to get discounted prices on his wares, get good trade-in value for your inventory, but also to get to the um, crystals at the end of the game for Mantle of the Force and um, Heart of the Jedi. So um, that's why I recommend that. I mean, granted, it still takes some time, but 30 to minutes to an hour or so, depending on how many games you win and lose with the Rodian, versus a few hours to get through and play, beating him enough times to um get the to get to the discounted prices makes it worth it just to have that mod then it's also a good way to get easy credits because you're betting 750 credits at a time so that's why i recommend that and then also once you do that that's when i recommend give selling all your wares to him so you get the best possible price and get the most currency so that you can buy the his armor and inventory and also the rodian on korriban I recommend some of his wares as well if you like some of his weapons because his stuff is also pretty highly powered as well. Um, and the final mod to install is the No Force Restrictions mod. This lets you uh, use any armor with your force powers. So uh, when you're playing the game, the as a Jedi, ultimately, you can really only use the Jedi robes and a few other ones in there in order or with your force powers, everything else is restricted. So by installing this mod, you can now install or use any mod that you want, whether it's Davik's Warsuit, the Mandalorian Battle or Assault Armors, the Sienegar Warsuit or whatever, like depending on your character build or how you want to ramp up your stats. But by installing the mod, you can now you play with any armor. So for me, I was playing with one of the, I forgot which war suit it was, but I was playing with one of them quite a bit. And then at the end, I was using the Mandalorian Assault Armor. So you can use any of those armors with your force mod. So you can, it adds to the possibilities and combinations of whatever you want your character to be. So for example, one of the things I realized for this gameplay is that if you buy the heavy Durasteel armor from the Star Forge, your character can now look very much like um, Boba Fett because it's a very greenish looking Mandalorian uh, minimalist armor. So if you even want to build a Boba Fett style character that you know uses um, mostly blasters and rifles, or if you want to make Boba Fett a force using um, Jedi or Sith or whatever, then you can now do that with that in mind. So when you buy that heavy Durasteel armor, the stats are okay on it, so I don't really recommend it, but if you want the look and feel of Boba Fett in um, Knights of the Old, Old Republic, you can do that as well. So if you want your force powers, but his armor, then that is definitely something you can do. So with that being said, I recommend whether you're playing on desktop or mobile, install these four, four mods so the gameplay is that much better. You can build an even stronger character. So the next time I play the game, um, I do kind of want to redo my um, soldier class, but do continue the whole Jedi thing. Um, but rather than uh, like a whole Mandalorian thing, I kind of want to do go down the road again with the similar armor, not necessarily the Mandalorian one, but go down the dark side, get Revan's robes ultimately, 
but build up a stronger soldier class and get use his implants and all that and maybe build up his um i don't know i'm just spitballing here for the next gameplay but a, another soldier class or something like that but um make a um a, a republic soldier or something that's gone to the dark side or some other dark side character that i think can be built within the game or something like that so with that being said um for my gameplay this week and it's also related to the android app review is that i started playing the doom 2 mod of eternity so this came across my um per my uh, peripheral just because i got a recommended video for the youtube gamer Big Mac Davis, he's been playing Ev Eternity 2 on YouTube. So as of this recording, I think he's still playing it. So if you want to check it out, you can. But I got to thinking like, well, if there's Ev Eternity 2, maybe there's an Ev Eternity 1. So I got to looking and sure there, was, sure enough, there it was. And it's actually a very interesting mod that came out a few years ago that adds some of the, the, the extra texture mappings that um, some of the people came out with a few years ago. And it adds a lot of uh, some interesting environmental conditions. Um, and the mod is actually a megawatt, so it's a full, full 30 set megawatt with all these different levels that have a lot of different environmental um, situations to it. So it's not the, your usual three or four episode um, gameplay with the levels spread evenly throughout them. It's actually six different episodes or chapters with five levels each. So you can kind of get a different environment in each chapter. So the first one is a medieval castle, and then one of them is like an ice world, another one is a tech world, another one I think is hell. So it's kind of a game to show off all these different environmental um, things that can be done with it, with the Doom to base it, and then some of these extra controls using with GZ Doom or PR Boom or PR Doom, I guess, whatever it's called, to show off some of these extra special effects. So, um, needless to say, I have started playing Ev Eternity 1, and so the playlist and game pl and a couple of videos are up already on the YouTube channel, so you can follow along with them, and so far with the medieval levels, I'm very thoroughly impressed with what they're showing off, what they're doing, um, and all of that stuff, so... I recommend playing, I'm recommending it off the bat just because with the first three levels, they have been doing a very good job as far as showing off um, what these different levels or what the mod can do with the Doom 2 base and um, all that extra environment stuff. So you have like rain and particulates, the um, platform, like the teleporting platforms have these particulates going up and you have all this extra like just background and environmental stuff going on so it looks very cool and i definitely recommend it so check that out on the youtube channel at youtube.com slash patel n01 um and of course if you want to comment on this post give feedback or whatever all you can get check out all the links to the social media sites i'm on at the website at headphonesneal.reviews and of course if you want early access to the video version of the show on youtube um, or an ad-free version of the show or just want to support it, you can support the show on Patreon at patreon.com slash pateln01. But that is all for this particular episode. Thanks for tuning in and until next time.